वेलकम टू द फर्स्ट सीजन ऑफ एंशियंट एनेक्डोट्स पावर्ड बाय लिसन कब दिस इज योर होस्ट रामनाथन अय्यर एंड दिस इज ललिता रामनाथन अपा 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 यू नो व्हाट व्हाट व्हाट्स द ग्रेट डिस्कवरी हैव यू रियलाइज्ड दैट द अर्थ इज राउंड व्हाट नो आई गॉट संगीता एंड काव्या टू बिकम डिनर्स अगेन न्यू वर्ड डिनर अपा You already know what dinner is, the catcher. You know Sangeeta and Kavya were singling out Malavika today. They wanted her to become the dinner again and again. Ah, I remember these names. Like Naladi Arhil, you and your group of four pink rubbers. But I thought they were all pally pally within the group, no? What happened? Okay, see, we were playing hidden four corners. and malavika is very fast pa kavya is a little um let's say well fed <laughs> so malavika will simply go behind kavya and catch it every time easily so this time sangeeta and kavya wanted malavika to become the dinner but they did it unfairly malavika and i were inside our safe corner spa I saw that she was within her corner before the chain got to her. Now what is a dinner kutipa and what's the chain? Is it the same one that is used to stop trains? Chittappa is right. Sometimes you get into autopilot mode. <laughs> dinner is the person who is supposed to catch everybody in the hidden four corners game. When the first dinner catches one person, they become a chain. Now keep up. <laughs> Story is moving faster than you now. Okay, okay. Switching to activity mode from autopilot. Now go on. Okay, so the chain reached Malavika, but she hid in her corner. But they said she's out. And you know what? Malavika is not even trying to defend herself. She's just going on hiding silently without coming out. Oh. And then what happened? I said Time out. I came out of my corner and told the chain people that I saw her get into the corner before the chain reached her. Who are the chain people now? Appa, the people who are trying to catch Malavika, Sangeeta and Kavya. Now you're just doing it on purpose. I'm trying. I'm trying. Okay, so what did the chain people do? I literally started with that. Sangeeta and Kavya were singling out Malavika today and they wanted her to become the dinner again and again. Okay 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 sorry sorry. And so you you intervened. Okay. You were the brave kid or then like Narada and Shiva's marriage. Wait what? They played hidden four corners in Shiva's marriage and Shiva became the dinner? Whoa. Shiva will just use his divya drishti to see where everyone was. Wait, what's the point of the game if he will know where everyone is anyway? I can tell you if you stop talking. <laughs> okay, entering listening mode. <sighs> Girls. Where was I? Ah, in the ancient pages of the Skanda Purana, a tale unfolds, one of epic proportions. In a time long past, there arose a fearsome Asura warrior. who had performed a thousand sacred rituals he was both righteous and brave this asura had become so mighty that he stood as an equal to none other than shatakratu himself appa who is shatakratu shatakratu well that's but another name for the indomitable lord indra the sovereign lord of the devas this asura was so formidable that no weapon could touch him this was king namuchi one of the sons of king mahabali himself and in the pages of the kedara kanda there unfolds a riveting saga where indra with the aid of energized and sanctified foam triumphs over the formidable namuchi namuchi had a son the dread tarakasura taraka was a relentless force of darkness and he was pained by how his father namuchi was unfairly defeated by indra taraka fueled by ambition and power embarked on an arduous journey of penance his penance was so severe that it moved the very fabric of existence the penance moved lord brahma's hands to give darshana to taraka lord brahma appeared before taraka and spoke 
The merit of your penance has borne fruit, dear Taraka. Ask, ask and it shall be granted. What boon do you seek? Taraka, with a sinister intention, besieged Brahma. O Grand Sire, grant me freedom from the clutches of aging and grant me invincibility. Brahma laughed out aloud and said, How can you, the son of the great Mahabali, ask for immortality and invincibility, dear Taraka? You will have freedom from aging and you will have invincibility in almost every quarter except from a child. Do you consent? Tarakasura questioned further. A child? A mere child? But who, O great Brahmadeva, would be audacious enough to challenge me? Brahma, with a knowing smile, declared, It shall be the child of Lord Shiva. Tarakasura, undaunted, chuckled and replied, Shiva? Shiva, you say? Shiva has been an ascetic since the tragic demise of Sati at Daksha's sacrifice. It would take a courageous and some might say a foolhardy maiden to be enamored by Shiva's rugged and unkempt personality. She would have to persuade her parents to consent to such a union and secure their blessings. She would then have to undertake rigorous penances to attain Shiva's favor. Thereafter, they both must bear children, and it is among these children that one will ever challenge me. Ha ha ha! I accept these odds, O mighty Brahmadeva. With a nod, Brahma granted Tarakasura his sinister boon and vanished into a shower of flowers. As time marched forward, Taraka unleashed relentless waves of attacks upon the celestial capital of the Devas, Amaravati. With the aid of the stalwart king Muchukunda from the mighty Ikshavaku race, the Devas valiantly fought back. Yet the battles had left them weary and yearning for a decisive end. In pursuit of this closure, the Devas, led by the indomitable Indra and guided by their wise Guru Brihaspati, made their ascent to the regal heights of the supreme mountain King Himadri. King Himadri and his majestic queen Mena welcomed the Devas with open arms. With heartfelt entreaties, the Devas beseeched the royal couple to bless the world with a daughter of extraordinary destiny. Himadri and Mena, in a moment of destiny's whisper, agreed. And thus, Parvati, a maiden of unparalleled character, graced the world with her presence. She grew up with a singular thought to wed the benevolent Lord Shiva. After jumping through a lot of hoops, the Devas ensured the holy union ordained by Mahavishnu and Lord Brahma. <laughs> hoops! Focus, Papa! As the day of the grand engagement ritual, the Nishchyadartham approached, an air of anticipation enveloped the celestial realms. This ritual involved both the bride and the groom's families to reveal their respective lineages. This ritual happened before the learned Brahmanas formalized their sacred union. King Himadri dutifully narrated his lineage when called upon. However, when it came to Lord Shiva's turn, Lord Shiva remained silent, casting an enigmatic and bewildering silence over the assembly. A hush fell over the gathering. Devas, Yakshas, Gandharvas, Siddhas all gazed upon Lord Shiva with curiosity and surprise. 
it was a dramatic moment when all eyes turned to shiva whose silence and pitiable expression seemed to defy explanation kathyatam tata gotram svangulam chaiva visheshatah kathayasva mahabhaga ityakarnya vachastatha sumukhena vimukhas sadyo yashochya shyochyatam gatah evam vidah suravarai rishibistadanim gandharva yakshamuni siddhaganaistadaiva drishto niruttara mukho bhagavan maheshu hasyam chakara subrisham vatanaradascha amidst this dramatic tableau a well known sound cut through the silence finally shambhu mahadeva a lean figure emerged from the shadows it was none other than the celestial sage narada the son of brahma bearing his divine veena narada with a mischievous glint in his eye prepared to play his enchanting music but king himadri clearly irritated interjected o holy lord we beseech you spare us this melody how can we truly enjoy your music when the time bound sacred ritual is being held up by lord shiva's unexplained silence unfazed narada responded veenam prakatayamasa brahma putro atha narada तदानीं वारितो धीमान वीणा मावादय प्रभो इत्युक्तः पर्वते नैव नारदो वाक्यम भ्रवीत त्वया पृष्टो भव साक्षात् स्वगोत्र कथनं प्रति यू सॉट टू नो शिवास लिनियज एंड Shiva's lineage is nothing other than Nadam the pure sound Shambhu the supreme lord resides within the sound itself thus lord shiva is identical with nadam he is a embodiment of sound therefore in response to knowing his lineage i shall play this veena in his honor As the strings of Narada's veena resonated through the heavens he continued his explanation Even the great devas including Lord Brahma and Lord Mahavishnu find themselves unable to fathom the depths of Lord Shiva's lineage Shiva transcends birth and form he is the eternal observer of the cosmos hence the name Akulina and Virupaksha The dramatic tension in the celestial assembly grew as Narada unveiled the mystery. Do you all remember the incident of where the benevolent lord had manifested as the unfathomable linga the lord who is without a gotra cannot even be seen by a human eye and yet lord shiva demonstrated that the whole range of the three worlds can be pervaded by that unfathomable linga all people do not know hara even these great sages are confounded o glorious one because they are ignorant of him ask them if you please they do make it their life's purpose to find out and yet many are unsuccessful brahma pi tam na janati mastakam parameshtina विष्णुर्गतो हि पातालं न दृष्टो हि ततैव च तेन लिंगेन महता ह्यागाध्येन जगद्रयम लीव अलोन द सेजेस द ग्रैंडफादर ऑफ ऑल द देवास हियर लॉर्ड ब्रह्मा हिमसेल्फ हैज ट्राइड हिज बेस्ट टू फाइंड आउट वेयर द ग्रैंड लिंगा ओरिजिनेटेड एंड वाज अनसक्सेसफुल टू रीच द blessed head of lord shiva 
and Lord Vishnu here assumed the form of the great Varaha and went to the nether worlds to find out the foot of Lord Shiva and returned unsuccessful. It is indeed a humorous situation that Lord Shiva is the creator and the destroyer of the universe and is without a lineage and yet is asked about his gotra and lineage. The Lord himself is Nadam. That energy which Lord Mahavishnu uses to sustain the universe and Lord Brahma uses to create is the same energy that transforms itself for the auspicious benefit of all. It has no birth, so no one can date back the lineage of this latent energy. It has no death, and so no one can claim to know the end of this energy. Anayaraditam noonam Tava putriya himalaya Najanasi katham chaiva mahagire Abhyam upadhyate Vishwam abhyam chaiva pratishtitam Etachritva Vachastasya Naradasya Mahatmanaha Himadrim Pramukha Sarve Tatha Chendra Purogamaha Sadhu Sadviti Te Sarve Uchur Vismita Manasaha Yishwarasya Tugambhiryam Nyatva Sarve Vijakshanaha Vismayen Samaslishta Uchuhu Sarve Parasparam Uchuhu Sarve Parasparam Narada concluded with a flourish. That same energy now manifested here as the great Lord Shiva has certainly been propitiated by this daughter of yours, O great Himadri. She knows this truth and is mature beyond her physical age. This is the reason she is the best match for Lord Shiva. She was able to see past his terrible form, smeared with ash and his rugged features wrapped in tiger skin. However, the same sight was not bearable by your queen, Mena, such is the greatness of Lord Shiva. King Himadri, profoundly moved by this revelation, bowed low and addressed Brahma, O Lord, O Lord of the Devas, I am blessed beyond measure by this revelation about the great Mahadeva. I beseech you, let the festivities continue in all their grandeur. Appa! Yes, Papa. So that's why I am like Narada in Shiva's marriage. Yes. Grandad used to tell me that this is the great secret behind the temple of Chidambaram, called as the Chidambara Rahasyam. Ooh, secrets! Yes. He who is one with sound is one with the universe as well. That is the secret. It is the symbolism behind the story. Just like how the dancer and the dance can never be separated, how the ornament and the gold in it can never be separated, and how the word and its meaning can never ever be separated, the dance is Shakti and the dancer is Shiva. They can never ever ever be separated. Kalidasa's memorable first line from Raghuvamsam. Appa me! Go right ahead. Vak artha viva. Vak artha viva Sampraktau Sampraktau Vak artha Vak artha Pratipadhaye Pratipadhaye Jagadaf pitarau Jagadaf pitarau Vande parvati parameshwarau Vande parvati parameshwarau Appa, I have a question. Oh, I can't wait to hear it. If Taraka was already told about Shiva's son, why did he not try to stop the marriage itself? Then Lord Kartikeya could have been stopped from being born, right? <laughs> Who said Lord Kartikeya was not stopped from being born? What? Taraka actually tried? No, not him. Agni tried 
Ganga tried almost everyone who wanted the child in the first place to be born tried to stop the birth of Kartikeya from happening. Oh god, why what happened? Hear it first on Ancient Anecdotes on your favorite podcast streaming providers. Tune in every week for a brand new episode.